You're watching News 5 at 6. Hello, everyone, and thanks for joining us here on News 5 at 6. I'm Rob Quirk. I'm Elizabeth Watts. Good evening to you. We have new details tonight on a bizarre standoff between Colorado Springs SWAT officers and a man in a tree. It happened this weekend on Eagle View Drive and Leela Ray Street. The man was wanted on multiple warrants. When police made contact, he climbed to the top of the tree and stayed there for about six hours. News 5's De Greg Dingrando is live in studio with more on this strange standoff, Greg. Elizabeth, the suspect Lane Maloof is wanted on several charges out of Alamosa, including a restraining order, child abuse, and domestic violence. Rob? Greg, thanks for the update. Well, another toasty one out there to kick off the work week. Let's check in now with meteorologist Jessica Van Meter in for Mike tonight. Hi, Jessica. Hey, guys. Yeah, definitely a toasty start to the new work week. Here's a look at our high temperatures. Well Construction will soon begin on several Pueblo West roads thanks to $200,000 of marijuana tax money. News 5 Shayla Girardin is live in Pueblo with the details. Shayla. That's right. This is the second year the Pueblo County Board of Commissioners has approved the use of marijuana tax revenue for road repair in this area. Andy Cohen, News 5. Andy, thank you. All right, will you take a moment to officially welcome my new co-anchor, Elizabeth Watts, to the KOAA family, Yay. working you into the lineup. Uh, your, let's see, altitude adjustment and working the heat it. index yeah. in from Vegas was, what, 118 last week? Yeah, said? it was very hot. I was excited as I was driving closer. The temperature started to drop a little bit. It got really green. It's so beautiful here. Isn't it, though? I love it. New era begins. Yes, Can't and I'm going to start working on the incline. All right. Adjustment That's so that right. I can do that. You made that promise. It's I on did. your bucket list. I'm going to do it. Anyway, One welcome. <laughs> Looking forward to the future together. Thank you. I'm here excited to be here. Great. All right, still ahead at six, the state's largest wildfire grows dramatically over the weekend. We'll have an update for you. Also, with just a few days to go to the Olympics opening ceremony, we'll check out what's going to be new at the games this year. Let's check in with Jessica. Well, we had a very hot start to the week, but we are looking at a cool down. 1,600 acres. News 5's Laura Wilson will have a complete report coming up of tonight's meeting again on News 5 at 10. The state's largest wildfire, the Beaver Creek Fire, really blew up in size over the weekend. It's burning in northwestern Colorado near the Wyoming border. Fire crews say a thunderstorm over the weekend brought strong wind gusts and pushed flames in all directions. A firefighter from Wyoming was also seriously injured in the battle. We don't have any updates on that person's condition today. As of now, the fire has burned more than 33,000 acres and it's considered 12% contained. Well, I came just in time for this. Yes. It's a special day in our state. It is Colorado's birthday 140 years ago. Colorado became the 38th state to join the union. We didn't get a cake for you. We don't have a cake for the state. I know. Come on. We really let I mean... things down. You still have time, though, <laughs> to take advantage of an evening walk and perhaps free admission into any state park. Now, if you're a member of the military, you get free admission to the parks all month long. All you have to do is bring your military ID, VA card, or other proof of service to a state park or a parks wildlife office to get your vehicle pass. By the way, you still need a valid license to camp or fish. Well, a Colorado sheriff pleads for help because of jail overcrowding. That's next at 6. And new information coming in tonight about those killed in the worst ballooning disaster the country has ever seen. Or what we're learning about the local victim coming up. Covering Colorado tonight, a former Colorado Springs woman among the 16 killed over the weekend in a horrible hot air balloon crash in Texas. Investigators say the balloon was flying too low when it ran into high power electric lines over a cornfield. Everyone on board died. That includes Paige Brabson, who grew up in Colorado Springs, and her mother, Laura Lee. The balloon company has suspended operations, but tonight it's still unclear why the balloon was flying so low. New at 6, we've learned tonight that the massive Gold King mine spill near Durango last year is the focus of a federal criminal investigation. It only came to light recently when members of Congress asked the EPA for more details about what happened, but were told they couldn't answer them due to the Justice Department probe. The statement did not say how long it's been underway. EPA workers caused that spill of some 3 million gallons of toxic waste into the Animas River, which then spread into New Mexico and Utah. A pilot who died in a crash near Durango two years ago had high levels of marijuana in his blood. That's according to investigators. The National Transportation Safety Board just released a report on the 2014 crash. John Early was flying in a vintage World War II plane when it went down, killing him and his co-pilot. Investigators say Early had more THC in his blood than is legally allowed for driving, but didn't say if that may have played a part in the crash. 
Overcrowding becoming a major concern at the Boulder County Jail. Yeah, the jail was originally meant to hold around 290 people, but on some nights it's packed with more than 500. The sheriff says it's pushing his staff to the limit and that he's repeatedly been asking for more deputies and a larger facility. Thankfully, a little girl is okay after getting trapped inside a locked car. Aurora Fire says her mother accidentally locked herself outside of the vehicle with the child inside. Because of the heat, she called for help. Fire crews broke a window to rescue the child and say she was not injured. Colorado's education system getting praise from the federal government today. Education Secretary John King Jr. in Denver today. Part of his visit included visiting classrooms and talking to teachers and administrators about their programs. Colorado, one of 20 states that received Race to the Top Early Learning grants to help increase the number of kids in high quality learning environments. Coming up at 6.30, Von Miller is back on the field with the Broncos. Hear from the Super Bowl MVP a little later in sports. He had a busy offseason, <laughs> but he's focused now and straight ahead at 6.30. Why numerous veterans groups are saying Donald Trump went too far with some of his recent comments. Stay with us. You're watching News 5 at 6.30. Our top story at 6.30, last week's major hailstorm still causing problems for dozens of homeowners in Colorado Springs. Many now left with broken windows, dented cars, torn up siding. It's been terrible. News 5's Lena Howland taking a closer look at the scope of the storm, the damage. She joins us live in the Springs. Lena? Well, we found out Thursday night's storm was a storm so big, insurance companies are now calling it a... We have some easy instructions on how to do so. They are posted online at KOAA.com. For now, reporting live in Colorado Springs, Lena Howland, News 5. Lena, thanks. A man wanted on charges of attempted murder, assault, and child abuse in custody tonight after an hours-long standoff with Colorado Springs police in a tree. Officers say they were tipped off that Lane Maloof was in the area of Eagle View and Leela Ray Street. But when he when they saw him, he when he saw them, I should say, he ran off and climbed the huge pine tree. Officers say they weren't sure if he was armed, so the SWAT team was called in to help. Negotiators talked with him for hours before they eventually started shooting pepper balls and water from a fire hose to make him uncomfortable. Not long after, he came down and was arrested. Some people who live in nearby apartments were evacuated and say it was an intense situation to watch. And then they said that he had warrants from Alamosa for murder. So that was really scary because I have kids here, you know. I have uh, three girls, so it was, it was pretty scary. Maloof has already been sent back to Alamosa to face all of the charges he was wanted for. People in Pueblo West will soon be seeing some road work over the next few weeks. This morning, county commissioners approved the use of $200,000 of marijuana tax money for much needed repairs. The money will be used to convert three gravel roads to chip seal. That includes Juanita Springs Drive, Russet Drive and Laramie Avenue. The chip seal material will provide a new service and extend the life cycle of the pavement. Construction is already underway on other roads. The first thing they see is our roads as they're driving down them. And uh, uh, in this case, it's great that we can use revenue from uh, uh, legal licensed uh, cannabis and uh, uh, use it to improve the appearance and livability of our community. This is the second year in a row the Board of Commissioners has approved $200,000 in marijuana taxes for road repair. First in your election watch tonight, veterans groups, including the VFW, calling Donald Trump's latest comments out of bounds. Following up for you tonight, Trump appeared before a veterans group in Ohio today, but is still facing criticism over his comments about the parents of a Muslim U.S. Army captain killed in action who criticized Trump's proposed ban on Muslims, questioned whether he had read the Constitution and that he had not made any sacrifices in his life. The Trump camp says the family opened itself up to criticism for appearing at the Democratic National Convention. Most Gold Star families, when the loss of their, their son or daughter, their brother, sister, husband or wife, they're not looking at it from a political perspective. 17 Gold Star families demanding an apology from Trump who questioned whether Ghazala Khan had been allowed to speak because of her religion. She said she's still grief stricken over the death of her son. Democratic presidential nominee Hillary Clinton, Republican vice presidential nominee Mike Pence coming to Colorado later this week. Both will hold rallies Wednesday. Clinton will be in Commerce City at Adams City High School. She will discuss her plans for job creation here in Colorado. Meantime, Trump's running mate Mike Pence will host a town hall in Denver at 2 Wednesday afternoon. Then 
Wednesday night. He will hold a rally at 6 in the Springs, but no other details about the Colorado Springs visit have been released so far. Well, we're now less than a week away from the start of the summer games. Yes, the opening ceremony is Friday. You showed up just yes. in time for that. I'm so excited and there will be some new additions to the Rio yes. games. After 92 years, rugby is back and I know you'll like this golf right. is an Olympic sport again after 112 years. But all the top uh, players in the world aren't playing golf, right. but that's a whole nother story. <laughs> NBC's Jennifer Bjorklund tells us there is one true first at these games, athletes from different countries who no longer call home. Popole Masanga, a refugee of war-torn Congo, is one of 10 athletes competing on a team without a country. He represents the Olympic refugee team in judo. Others include a Syrian refugee swimmer who swam across the Mediterranean Sea to get to Europe and to safety, and runners from refugee camps in Kenya who fled South Sudan. It means you tell the world that we refugee, we are human beings like other people, you see? And what the refugee pain in it, passing through in the same way other people passing through. They'll march in under the Olympic flag along with elite athletes in more than three dozen sports, including rugby, back as an Olympic sport for the first time since 1924. You know, rugby in the Olympics is incredibly exciting, and I think really America and the world will fall in love with the game. And it's fast paced, it's um, big hits, and a lot of one on ones, and just you know, but they'll be like, what? And the decidedly slower paced game of golf is back for the first time since 1904. But more than a dozen of the world's top golfers have withdrawn from the games for fear of Zika virus. But the players who are all in hope this world stage will invigorate their game. I'm more excited about the impact, honestly, that the Olympics will make on golf versus my own self winning the medal. After the games, the new golf course will become a public facility called an important Olympic legacy for Brazil. In Rio, Jennifer Bjorkland, NBC News. Jennifer, thank you. In case you hadn't heard, News 5, we are your Olympic station, and you can catch all the games, all the action right here on KOAA 5. And we will be live downtown yes. Friday night. Excited for that as part of the opening ceremony celebration. It is a great time. Come yes. on down and celebrate. Well, are you driving one of the most commonly stolen vehicles in the U.S.? We'll tell you what tops that list. That's ahead at 630. But first, let's check back in with Jessica. Well, most of us staying dry this evening. It's been a hot start to the week, but we are looking at some cooler temperatures and better rain chances. We head into the weekend. That's ahead in your first split five forecast. Best selection, always over 3,000 new and used vehicles. Best price, every new and used vehicle discounted at market or below. Best price, best selection, best people. See us today or online anytime at fillong.com. Woodland Park 70s for tomorrow, close to 80 by Wednesday, and then temperature's going to take a bit of a tumble, just into the 60s by Friday, and then again Friday and Saturday. Best chance for some of those showers and thunderstorms, but 70s is going to feel very nice after the 90s and 100s. Yeah. Let's it's hope the uh, rain holds off between like 4.30 yeah. <laughs> and 7.30 on Friday. Right. Guys, we're going to be outside. Your, your request has been noted. I will oh. petition to the weather gods and see what they can do. Okay, good. Yes. We love that kind of power. I'm, I'm batting for <laughs> you guys. You. Trying at least. Well, I am enjoying the temperatures here. Good. I will say nice that. Yeah, it's a little it's better than 100, 118. It's right. the dry yeah. heat, so. though, right? The dry it is a dry heat, but, it's you know, I'll take the once right. you get to 100, it doesn't matter if it's dry or hot. This it's is just much hot. Better. Right, I yes. love it. Grant joins us now. S speaking of the last place you were, Las Vegas only giving the Broncos 15 to 1 odds to repeat a Super Bowl champs. Yeah. What's the deal, Elizabeth? I don't know. Uh, we'll <laughs> talk about what the defense yeah, has to say. Yeah. Yeah. No, so that's on Anything, it's on you. Let's blame the odds makers. The new person. We'll talk about what the defense has to say about that coming up. And what about pack football? College football right around the corner as well. We head to Pueblo next. 500 also lost ground down three points. Here's your daily check on gold and silver prices. Not a lot of movement tonight. Beginning tonight's Consumer Watch, looking at the price of a college education. A new study by Bankrate.com finds that despite the high cost of tuition, 89% of college grads say their college education was a good investment. The study also found that 62% of Americans support making college tuition free for everyone. 
The annual list of top stolen vehicles in the United States is out from the National Insurance Crime Bureau, showing that imported cars and pickups still dominate the list. Yeah, in 2015, the 1996 Honda Accord, the most stolen car nationwide, with more than 52,000 stolen. The 1998 Honda Civic, the second most stolen, followed by the 06 full-size Ford pickup, the 2004 full-size Chevy pickup, and the 2014 Toyota Camry. Bad news if you like to eat raw cookie dough or cake batter. Health officials warning consumers to not eat that good stuff following General Mills' massive recall of about 45 million pounds of flour amid suspicion of E. coli contamination. The tainted flour has sickened 46 people in 21 states. Scientists say they figured out a way to make milk stay fresher longer. Typically, pasteurization is done by either using a high temperature short time treatment of 161 degrees for 15 seconds or low temperature, long time treatment of 145 <laughs> degrees for 30 seconds. We hope you're all taking notes mm -hmm. at home. There's gonna be a quiz here in about an hour, but a new method developed by scientists at Purdue involves spraying droplets through a heated and pressurized chamber, exposing them to a low temperature, short time treatment for just two one hundredths of a second. In the result, it works. Shelf life, everybody, up to 63 Days. I mean, no one wants spoiled milk, so. No. Sounds good. Fascinating. <laughs> uh, okay, bummer. Some Pokemon Go fans devastated tonight after downloading an update for the game. Re uh, game reset. They actually put their, ga their games back to level one. Fortunately, I did not I'm do this so update. I'm just so flustered by all this. I didn't this. do this update, thank Can't goodness. Read. Many players took to social media over the weekend to complain. The update reset their progress, wiping out weeks worth of mm. Pokemon catching. Some users reported being able to get their progress back by using an alternative email to sign in, but most were forced to start their searching all over again. We'll be right back.